So now we'll see the uh, case of designing the state feedback controller for the multivariable case. So, so far we have discussed the designing of the controller mainly for the single input variable case where we have also discussed the robust robustness and tracking problems. Uh, so for the multivariable case, uh, the layout of the program problem would remain the same. So consider a plan described by the n-dimensional p input state equation. So now here we are considering p number of inputs instead of uh, scalar uh, given by this state equation where a, b, c are the matrices. So you will note that when we were discussing about the single variable case, the parameters we had taken in a small letters. So now when we take the, when we consider the case of the matrices, we will consider those parameters as the capital letters as you will see in b and c matrix. Uh, in the state feedback, so we denote this as the plant and the, in state feedback the input view is given by this one. So we have seen earlier for the single variable case we have designed such kind of input but now here the k matrix, the k would be a matrix instead of a vector. So k is a p cross n times a, a real constant matrix and r is a reference signal. <coughs> so once we uh, put this u into this plant <coughs> we obtain the state space equation for the closed loop system that is the a matrix would now change to a minus b times k the b matrix would remain the same but it now becomes a distribution matrix of the reference signal and there would not be any change on the c matrix okay so here we will discuss cases or we'll discuss some designs to synthesize this k so again recalling the important theorems or the important results we what we had discussed for the single variable case so for the multivariable case the pair a minus bk comma b for any p cross n real constant matrix k is controllable if and only if the pair a b is controllable so this is the key result and in fact this is the starting point as well so if the pair a b is not controllable you we cannot ensure that the closed loop pair would also be uncontrollable. If we see a very quick snapshot of the proof of this theorem, the proof would remain almost uh, similar to what we had seen for the single variable case. But for the multivariable case, only this matrix would change. So if you recall that the controllability matrix of the feedback loop, we have expressed as equal to the controllability matrix of the plant times some constant matrix. Now here uh, since we have the uh, p number of inputs this controllability matrix would no longer be a square matrix but it is ensured that the rank of this matrix is full rank. So if you see the rightmost part uh, of this equation this is an upper triangular matrix with all the diagonal elements as the identity matrix of p dimension. So this matrix would be a square matrix and would definitely be a non-singular matrix. Now to ensure the that the CF is also full rank, we only need to have the full rank of the control of this controllability matrix of the plant. So only this part would remain the would remain changed. Otherwise the rest of the part would be similar. So another conclusion we made at that time that the controllability property would be preserved in any state feedback. If the original plant is of the original pair is controllable then under any k the, the pair a minus big a comma b would also be controllable. But at the same time we also noticed that the control the observability property which we would discuss in the subsequent week is not necessary be preserved. <coughs> the next result says that all the eigenvalues of the closed loop state matrix can be assigned arbitrarily provided complex conjugate eigenvalues assigned in pairs 
by selecting a real constant k if and only if the pair AB is controllable. So again, this is the similar result we had discussed for the single variable case, for the single input variable case. But this also holds for the multivariable case also. That uh, that if the pair AB is controllable, then the eigenvalues can be placed anywhere. Now we had also discussed that if the pair AB is not controllable, then we can use the uncontrollable decomposition to apply on this pair AB and extract only the controllable part. So we only need to show uh, <coughs> to ensure that the uncontrollable component in that decomposition has its eigenvalues onto the left hand side right because for the controllable part we can place the eigenvalues anywhere on the right hand side but if and we cannot uh, change the eigenvalues of the uncontrollable part so if we ensure that the eigenvalues are on the left hand side then the system at least we can ensure the stability of the system okay so for the single uh, input case we had discussed two design for the design of the for the state feedback controller so the first one if you recall is the eigenvalue assignment and the second one is using the Lyapunov equation method now if you recall that in the eigenvalue assignment uh, method we computed the feedback gain by taking the inverse of the controllability matrix now since the controllability matrix here is not a square matrix we cannot take its inverse so the eigenvalue assignment approach cannot be applied for the multivariable case to synthesize the gain, the gain matrix k. So, but in the Lyapunov equation method, we had seen we do not require the inverse of the controllability matrix, but it is the inverse of some another uh, square matrix, which we will see that whether that method applies directly for the multivariable case. So if we see this problem <coughs> of designing a feedback controller says that consider an n dimensional p input pair a comma b we need to compute a p cross n real constant matrix k so that a minus b k has any set of desired eigenvalues. Now this method has some restrictions that the desired eigenvalues cannot be placed at the origin and also the set of desired eigenvalues should not contain the eigenvalues of the A matrix also. Okay. <coughs> now, let's see the design of the gain matrix K. So the first three steps remains almost similar, which says that first of all, we need to form matrix F, which is a square matrix of dimension N, which contains a set of desired eigenvalues and at the same time it should not contain the eigenvalues of the original A matrix. So we had discussed number of uh, forms for selecting a matrix F. One is the model form and another is the companion form. You can uh, choose the matrix F in any of the form. The second step we need to select an arbitrary P times N matrix K bar such that the pair F transpose K bar transpose is controllable. Third step, once we have found such K bar, then using this Lyapunov equation, we can solve for a unique T, unique matrix T. Now from here, we once we have computed this T matrix, then the design of the gain matrix was given by this one and most and the key result hinges upon the invertibility of the or the non-singularity of the t matrix so we need to ensure that for the multivariable case is it always possible that the matrix t is non-singular so that we can take its inverse so we know that if the matrix t is singular <coughs> then we cannot carry forward this design because we cannot compute this equation. So in that case, since k bar is chosen arbitrarily, we would keep repeating the design until we find a t which is non-singular. 
okay and if the matrix t is non singular we can compute this and at the same time we ensure that the closed loop state matrix would have the set of desired eigenvalues and the proof of this one we can see uh, straightforwardly that we just need to put k bar is equal to kt into this equation and we obtain this and finally we can write the closed loop state matrix as t into f into t inverse which is basically the simulated transformation which ensures that whatever the eigenvalues this f matrix has the closed loop state matrix would also have those eigenvalues okay now the most important aspect here that that under the CISO case, the single input, single output case, we had ensured that the T matrix would always be a non-singular matrix. But for the multivariable case, it might not be possible that the matrix is non-singular, even if the pair AB and F transpose K bar transpose are controllable. <coughs> okay. So we will see the proof of this one that why we cannot uh, ensure always the non singularity of the matrix t in the multivariable case so in fact this leads to the only the necessary condition meaning to say that if the matrix t is non singular or the determinant of the matrix t is not equal to zero then it implies the both the pairs a comma b and f transpose comma k bar transpose would be controllable but if this condition holds that uh, both the pairs are controllable that then it might not be possible that the matrix is non-singular okay so this is only a necessary condition but not a sufficient condition we can also write this statement in as one of the results of which the proof we will see <coughs> that if a and f have no eigenvalues in common then the unique solution t of this Lyapunov equation is non-singular only if the pairs a comma b and f transpose k bar transpose are controllable so which is only a necessary condition so we can see the proof which is again the same as what we had discussed for the single input variable case so if you recall we had obtained this equation as the final equation to show the matrix t or the to comment on the non singularity of the matrix t now this part delta of a and delta or delta of s is basically the characteristic polynomial and by using the kelly hamilton theorem this part would go to zero so the remaining part is minus t times delta of f so this is another matrix which we had defined if you remember this by f tilde okay and on the right hand side we have the controllability matrix of the pair a comma b the controllability matrix of the pair f transpose k bar transpose and in the middle we had uh, a square matrix which is a non singular so now if we see this for the multivariable case all the small b's would change into the capital b's similarly here all the small k bars would change into the capital k bars and all these ones would be would change to the identity matrix of appropriate direction uh, dimension so this can be represented as finally the controllability matrix of the pair ab times some sigma matrix which is this one times the controllability matrix of the pair f transpose k bar transpose okay now this matrix would be having a dimension np times np this matrix would have the dimension np times n and this matrix would have the dimension n times np okay also note that uh, that this is an upper triangular matrix so the this matrix would always be a uh, non singular matrix and the determinant would be equal to identity okay now the rank of this matrix is n because it is controllable the rank of this matrix would also be n so and on the left hand side 
delta or f tilde we had already shown that this matrix is a non singular matrix okay so we can take its inverse and it would be a square matrix also so now if this is control if this has full rank this is a square matrix and this is also a full rank matrix then we cannot ensure that the matrix t would still be a non singular matrix but if the matrix t is a non singular matrix we can ensure that all these matrices would be a full rank right we, we can so we can see one example also let's say <coughs> the controllability matrix now let's write minus t f tilde which is delta f as the controllability matrix of the pair ab sigma and the controllability matrix of the pair f transpose comma k bar transpose right so let's write this let's take some uh, basic example to demonstrate uh, this fact so we take two states and two inputs so in that case this matrix would have the dimension 2 cross 4 and that 2 cross 4 matrix can be written as this one okay now this matrix is a full rank matrix of dimension 2 this we can choose an identity matrix of dimension np times np sigma and this controllability matrix of this pair would be of dimension 4 times 4 cross 2 okay and np is 4 so basically this would be 4 times 4 and this we can write as 1 0 okay so this matrix has full rank this matrix has full rank this is a non singular matrix so now if we see the product of all these matrices it would be 1 0 right so you see on the right hand side we do not have the the full rank matrix though all the three individual matrices are of full rank so we cannot ensure that the t matrix would be a non singular matrix okay so that's why this is only a sufficient condition oh sorry a necessary condition but not the sufficient condition so now the problem arises that either we keep iterating to find those k bar such that two conditions are satisfied that the pair f transpose k bar transpose is controllable and the matrix t is non singular okay or we should search for another design method by which we can compute in one shot the matrix k so for that we will carry out another design which we also call the cyclic design so the idea here is that we change the multi input problem into a single input problem and then uh, we apply earlier results to finally compute the matrix k <coughs> okay because for the benefit of the using this cyclic design that once we have represented a multi variable system or multi input variable system into a single input variable system then all the previous results the eigen value assignment and the lyapunov phase uh, design we could apply to finally compute uh, state feedback for a multi input problem <coughs> so we define a cyclic uh, a matrix a as a cyclic matrix whenever its characteristic polynomial equal its minimal polynomial so characteristic polynomial we have been discussing a number of times but the minimal polynomial uh, we had discussed during the stability week possibly in some of the earlier lectures we had discussed that what polynomials we can uh, say that this polynomial is a minimal polynomial okay now the same definition we can also apply by transforming the matrix into its Jordan form and then applying the then seeing the conditions being satisfied 
by the Jordan form of the A matrix. So a matrix A is called a cyclic matrix whenever the Jordan form of A matrix has one and only Jordan block associated with each distinct eigenvalue. Okay. So this is how we define the cyclic matrix. Either you compute the characteristic and minimal polynomial and see their equivalence or you come or you transform by using the simulated transformation into the Jordan form and then seeing whether there is only one and only one Jordan block associated with each distinct eigenvalue. Okay. So let's see. So this is one of the important results which we will uh, use to design the gain matrix K. So if the n dimensional p input pair a comma b is controllable and if a is cyclic then for almost any p cross l vector v the single input pair a comma b v is controllable. So this single input pair would be possible if we have this uh, p cross 1. Okay. Then this single input pair a comma b times v is controllable. So if we recall from the controllability week, we had discussed one result that the controllability property of the system is invariant or is invariant under any simulated transformation. So whether if we have uh, transformed into another equivalent transformation, the uh, the Jordan form of the matrix A would still be satisfy the controllability of the pair A comma B. Okay. We will not go into the detailed proof of this result, but we can see through some example or the logical idea behind this proof. So for example, consider this A matrix, <coughs> which is a 5 cross 5 matrix and B as 5 cross 2 matrix, meaning to say that we have 5 states and 2 number of inputs. Okay. So if we pay attention to this matrix A, this matrix A is already given into its Jordan form. So the one, so and it contains 2 distinct eigenvalues. In overall it, it, it contains uh, 5 eigenvalues but, can, but has only 2 distinct eigenvalues. One is 2 and another is minus 1. So with respect to minus 1, we have one block which is a Jordan block and with respect to the eigenvalue 2, we have another Jordan block. Okay. So this satisfies the definition of a cyclic matrix. So we can say that matrix A is a cyclic, uh, is a cyclic matrix. Now let's select V which is 2 cross 1. And we can write <coughs> this b times v as vector this one. So this cross elements represent that it can represent any of the that we are not concerned with these elements. So these elements could be pretty much straightforward if you want to compute from here. So this one would be v2. This would be 0. Uh, let's denote the third element by alpha. The fourth element would be 4v1 plus 3v2 and let's denote the fifth element by beta okay now one of the <coughs> problems we had discussed during the uh, tutorial of the controllability week that the necessary and sufficient condition for the pair a comma b times v to be controllable are that alpha and beta should not be equal to zero in fact, this is also one of the results of which uh, the proof we had seen through numerical examples during the tutorial classes. Or you can prove by yourself as well. So now see, uh, since alpha is given by v1 plus 2 into v2 and beta is nothing but only v1. Now either alpha or beta is 0 if and only if v1 is equal to 0 or v1 by v2 is equal to minus 2 by v1. Hmm? This you can uh, see readily that if v1 is 0 beta would straightforwardly be 0. 
if beta is zero then the uh, pair a comma b times v is not controllable and we cannot carry forward our design now if v1 over v2 satisfies or becomes equal to minus 2 then in that case uh, the alpha will become equal to 0 again according to this result the pair a comma b times v is again not controllable okay but see thus any v other than v equal 0 and v1 equal minus 2 times v2 will make a comma b times v controllable okay. we can visualize this in a two dimensional space because we have only two variables v1 and v2 so the first condition is uh, v1 equals 0 which is this line okay along this line v1 would always be 0 now another condition is that v1 uh, v1 by v2 should not be equal to minus v2 so we have normalized the x axis by v1 by 2 and all the v's should also not lie onto this line now if this v lies any other elsewhere on this two dimensional space then we can then it is guaranteed that the pair a times uh, a comma b times v is controllable okay so this these are the almost the rare chances chances so the cyclicity assumption is only as uh, is essential for in this theorem we can take another example also let's take this pair as this one okay which is a 3 cross 3 dimension and b again contains two number of inputs now this a matrix has eigenvalues has three eigenvalues located at 2 okay but it has two eigen uh, two jordan blocks with respect to one eigenvalue so one block is this one another block is this one so the here although the pair a comma b is controllable but the matrix a is not cyclic so for all for any b so there is no v such that you can make a comma b times v controllable so we need the controllability of this pair to carry forward our uh, design of the gain matrix k if all the eigenvalues of a are distinct then it is already ensured that there would be only one jordan block associated to every eigenvalue so thus a sufficient condition for a to be cyclic is that all eigenvalues of a are indistinct right so this is uh, pretty much straightforward it is only a problem if the matrix a has repeated eigenvalues so we need to see whether there is only one Jordan block associated to the repeated eigenvalue. Okay. Now the next result says that if the pair A comma B is controllable, then for almost any P cross N real constant matrix K, the closed loop state matrix has only distinct eigenvalues and is consequently cyclic. So here we see the straightforward benefit that in the Lyapunov based design we need to select the matrix k bar to ensure those two strict conditions but here we had seen that we can select almost or for almost all p uh, uh, v vector the pair a comma b times v is controllable now if the pair a comma b is controllable then for almost any matrix k we can put any matrix k such that this matrix would have the distinct eigenvalues and would definitely be a cyclic matrix so this is the main benefit that there we need to iterate iterate for those k bar but here this uh, the become or distinct eigenvalues closed uh, closed loop state matrix has only distinct eigenvalues for almost all k hmm? now with the distinct eigenvalues we also ensured at the same time that uh, so this condition is pretty much straightforward that it would be cyclic because it contains all the distinct eigenvalues 
<coughs> now we will use these two important results to finally design that k uh, the k matrix first but note that in both these results we need the controllability of the pair a comma b now if the original pair a comma b is not controllable from the necessary and sufficient condition it is already ensured that you cannot design a k matrix to place the eigenvalues arbitrarily so if the pair control the pair is controllable and a is cyclic we can select any b such that this pair is controllable now if this pair is controllable we can select any k matrix of appropriate dimension such that this matrix has distinct eigenvalues or it becomes cyclic okay so we can now find the k matrix to place all eigenvalues of the exclusive loop state matrix in any desired position <coughs> so let's see so first case consider that if the matrix a is not cyclic okay now if the matrix a is cyclic we can go directly go to the step 2 this you can see as the step 1 which we need to carry out if the matrix A is not cyclic. Now by using the second result, we can get rid of this non-cyclicity of the matrix A because we can select any K to make this closed loop state uh, feedback matrix to make this pair as a cyclic matrix. So let's see how this is implemented through the block diagram. This is the original plan. okay this is the original plan now this step one is carried out if the matrix a is not cyclic so first we introduce a feedback by this equation where w is some variable u is equal to w minus k1 x such that the matrix a bar which is defined as a minus b times k1 in this state equation becomes cyclic and this is a result or this is a consequence of the second result this one second theorem okay so now we had ensured two things that the that this if i see the map from w to y or w to x from w to x so we i can carry out my design on this uh, map from w to x instead of u to x because u to x in this map u to x we have we do not have this matrix a as a cyclic matrix but in the map from w to x we have the state matrix as a cyclic matrix now because the pair a comma b is controllable so a bar b would also be controllable thus there exists a p times 1 real vector v such that a bar comma b times v is controllable now note that here the selection of the matrix k1 and the selection of the vector v is not unique hmm? because these this was the conclusion of the previous two results also okay so the choice of k1 and v are not unique and they can be chosen arbitrarily let's carry forward so next we introduce another state feedback where now we compute w as the reference signal r which is given minus k2 times the state x with k2 defined as v times k so now you see that k is now a vector which we need to synthesize finally instead of the k matrix where k is a one cross n real vector then applying this controller to the previous system we obtain this state space equation of the closed loop so in the block diagram you would say from the x so we have added this block or this path to finally compute this w so the step one is to carry out this part and this step one was carried out if the matrix a is not cyclic now if the matrix a is cyclic we can directly carry out the step 2 
okay so this would become as the closed loop state matrix a bar minus b times v times k and b becomes the distribution matrix of the reference signal r now because the single input pair a bar comma b times v is controllable <coughs> the eigen values of this matrix of the closed loop state matrix can be assigned arbitrarily by selecting a k so since we only need to design this vector k which we can carry out by either using the eigen value assignment approach or the lyapunov base approach where the where both the conditions would be satisfied first the controllability matrix would be a square matrix second the matrix t in the lyapunov design would always be non singular so now if we combine these two state feedbacks so first was the this one w is equal to r minus uh, sorry the first one was u is equal to w minus k one x and the second one is the w minus uh, w is equal to r minus k two x so combining this one because we finally need to compute the signal u is given by r minus k one plus k two times x and k one plus k two would give me the complete matrix k okay now with the help of this k matrix uh, we can achieve arbitrarily eigen value assignment okay so this is how we can carry out the design